Wimes, shout out Wimes, shout out Wimes. So look, we back again for another week of videos. Uh, this time, we are looking at the private prison system, man. Um, this was something that was recommended in the comments. So I appreciate the recommendation. It actually is a pretty good topic to look into. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to react, you know what I'm saying? We're going to give y'all what we always do. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be back at the end of the video for it. If you're new, please like, share, and subscribe. If you're not, you already know how we getting in, right? Uh, so with that, man, enjoy. P.S. As always, we have to let you know that these videos do not express our views. These videos are not something that we made or that we endorse. These aren't pages of our friends or anything like that. It's just videos that we are reacting to and videos that we found interesting. So that's what we'll do. We'll react. Um, hopefully you guys will react in the comments, but these are not our thoughts. These are not our views. These are just views that we're reacting to, even if some of them may align, right? So uh, with that being said, enjoy. But the private prison makes its money either way. Let me explain. First thing to understand about the private prison business is that they're actually government contractors. They enter into a contract. Now, in that contract, they talk about a bunch of different things, but one of those things is price. Let's say it costs $100 a day to house an inmate. Well, naturally, any for-profit company is going to add a little bit of buffer in there so that way they can make a profit. So the private prison may charge the government $125, $150 per day per inmate, for example. Now that's price. But another thing that might be in that contract is a thing called bed guarantees. This is where the government guarantees the prison that at least 90% of those beds will always be occupied for the duration of the contract. Yeah, the government guarantees it in a contract, which might leave you wondering, how can the government be so sure that that many people will commit crimes? And the better question, what happens if they don't? Want to know what would happen if we all obeyed the law? <laughs> the government would have to pay a fee to the private prison. That's right. Yeah, it's in the contract. For every empty bed that is not filled, for every law-abiding citizen that stays on the straight and narrow, the government is punished by having to pay a fee. And that's when you realize citizens are punished when they do commit crimes. The state governments are punished if they don't. But the private prison makes its money. Well, yes. Investopedia has a surprisingly beautiful breakdown of how private prisons work and what the problem is with them. Oh, and just to be clear, while the United States uses a combination of both private and public facilities, some aspects of public facilities are outsourced or operated by third-party companies or contractors. Let's start here. Specifically, let's start here. A private prison is run by a corporation. That corporation's end goal is to profit from anything they deal in. In order to make money as a private prison, the corporation enters into a contract with the government. This contract should state the basis for payment to the corporation. It can be based on the size of the prison, based on a monthly or yearly set amount, or in most cases, it is paid based on the number of inmates that the prison houses. Let's suppose that it costs $100 per day to incarcerate someone. Assuming full capacity, including all administration costs, and the prison building can hold a thousand inmates. A private prison can offer its services to the government and charge $150 per day per inmate. Generally speaking, the government will agree to these terms if the $150 is less than if the prison was publicly run. That difference is where the private prison makes its money. You can read this if you want to, but the one below is what's important to me. In order to stay in business, these prisons need a constant stream of inmates coming in to replace those that have served their sentence. This means that laws have to be enforced, contracts renewed, and in some cases, laws more strictly enforced. Corporations may lobby lawmakers for their support or otherwise advocate for stronger enforcement of laws. It says may a lot. All of this stuff happens a lot, constantly, all the time in America. Based on a U.S. Department of Justice study in which data from 24 states measured state recidivism rates from 2008 through 2018, the recidivism rate was 82%. Besides that point, if prison was 100% effective, the private prisons would be working themselves out of business. This makes one wonder, is prison supposed to rehabilitate the individual or is it supposed to earn money? Obviously, if you tell someone who is homeless that they cannot sleep on public spaces, then you are just trying to fast track them into easy, cheap labor. Who benefits and profits off our bickering and our division? Let's take rap music. Let's take okay. it. 
Same people who own the labels own the prisons. So, so literally the same people? Literally the same people who own the labels own private prisons. Private prisons. So, you know, it, it seems really kind of suspicious, if you want to say that word, that, you know, the records that come out are really geared to push people towards that prison industry. But they didn't make you write those lyrics. It's not about making, it's not about making somebody write the lyrics. It's about um, being there as guardrails. Have you ever wondered how the U.S. ended up with an extraordinary number of private prisons? In the 80s and the 90s, the war on drugs and harsh sentencing policies meant that the U.S. prison population skyrocketed. Overcrowding in prisons became a rising issue with two inmates in a cellmate for one inmate. So private firms stepped in, offering to build more facilities and faster. But it wasn't long before they had problems. It became apparent that in many cases, profits were prioritized over the care of those housed inside. With taxpayers' money, these private facilities can receive up to $100,000 a year per inmate. To save on costs, in many cases, private prison officers are widely underpaid, offer fewer staff incentives, and can struggle to retain employees. There's only two ways to make money. Increase your revenue by putting more bodies behind bars, and decrease your expenses by lower quality of care for the bodies behind bars. When Joe Biden became president in 2020, he promised criminal justice reform. But the private companies have improvised, and are now filling these same facilities with undocumented immigrants. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments. So I was watching a video about Playboy Cardi and how his concert and Lil Uzi have like demonic vibes. And then like it cuts to these people kind of like in a mosh pit hurting each other. Can I just say this? On concert nights, they don't just get paid for the ticket that you pick up from Ticketmaster to see their show. Now, see, these celebrities, they are all shareholders to private prison systems, to the detainee facilities along our very unsecure borders. So when they stir up violence and get you to commit crimes, they profit off of your demise. The private prison systems and the detainee facilities here in this country get $40,000 for each inmate. That means when you go to prison, that prison got 40 grand for you that year. That money probably went to somebody's vacation. Please be careful about the music that you listen to. If it stirs up negativity, negative acts. In other words, if it's just music that tells you to go and do the wrong thing all the time, those are people who are private shareholders to the private prison systems and detainee facilities. That's how you can tell. Because why would anybody tell you to go and break the law? Why would anybody go and tell you to commit a crime? unless they are benefiting off of it. Why would anybody tell you to put yourself in danger? There's a private prison industry called Unicor that partners with the BOP and it brings a lot of money to BOP, but it brings a whole bunch of money to themselves too. So Unicor, <clears throat> if you have a calendar hanging on your wall, there's a very good chance it was cut, printed at Petersburg Low. They do tens of thousands a month. When you buy clothes at like a J.C. Penney, Belk, wherever the hell you go to, and they throw that coat hanger in that big box that they throw all the coat hangers into once they give you your clothes, those coat hangers get sent to Petersburg Medium, where they sort them out. Uh, yeah. Um, now, the starting base pay there, you know, I didn't work in Unicor, but um, if I remember correctly, the starting pay was around a dollar an hour. So that's 160 a month starting pay. And within a couple of years, guys were generally making <clears throat> 300 a month. One of my friends, though, uh, Fisher in there, he was the number one guy. He was MacGyver. He could do fucking, he, he'd fix anything. You give him like a can of hairspray and a couple toothpicks and rubber band, he'll make a fucking flamethrower. Uh, they had him work 60 hour weeks, probably four weeks in a row. He worked 60 hour weeks. He was the fix it man. And he made nine around $900 in a month, one month at, uh, the print and press at Petersburg low security where they do the calendars at. Um, so people are making a lot, making a whole lot more money. <clears throat> Other jobs in prison typically, 
um, to the highest paying job, the grades, you know, like the grade one paying jobs, you have to work up. It starts at like grade four and works up to one are like 150 bucks, you know, but at Unicor, they make a whole lot more money. <clears throat> they make a whole lot more money. They uh, can work overtime. And then there's other little perks. Uh, at the medium security, of course, since it's in a clothing store and they throw those coat hangers in there, every once in a while, one of the workers will snatch, snatch something out of the box, like something that'll be left behind. A lot of the punks like to buy thongs in there. So they'd have the workers at the medium security. They found a the thong. They were like, cha-ching. They'd sell that shit for like 50, 100 bucks. You heard about this shit. And they found a knife in one of the boxes one time, a straight up pocket knife. They turned it in the boss though. It didn't get snuck out of there. There's pretty wild shit with it. But so it's kind of a double-edged thing. Yeah, I'm paying people, you know, uh, more than they'd get paid otherwise. So, you know, feel bad as you may, but the inmates like it. Um, the guy who I talked about, Fisher, he sent a lot of that family home to his family to help his family. I mean, he was making six, eight, nine hundred dollars a month usually, cause he, but he was working 60 hours a week. Got a link up top to my YouTube. It's an up there pointing to a play button. That'll take you right to me. I do uh, new uh, videos at 6 p.m. every day. When I'm president in 2028, that'll be the first thing to go. Up next, public schools will start teaching students a secondary language in first grade. And this language will be determined based upon their region. So if the second most common language spoken in their region is Mandarin, your child is gonna be learning Mandarin at age six. The United States is one of the only Western countries, one of the only developed countries whose population is not bilingual. That's, uh, that's humiliating. Next. We're going to take people out of prison and put them in rehabilitation facilities to re-enter them into society. There are so many criminals locked up behind bars who are not convicted of a violent crime. Next, war will be on pause. All the troops will be back in the United States. Give veterans some time to focus on their education. Take a break from war. Take all that money from the military industrial complex and reinvest it into our people. Expand our education system. Children should start free public education at age two, and they should end their free public education at age 21. All students between ages 16 and 25 will receive a monthly grant of $800. And when they turn 18, they can choose whichever education they want to study after they graduate high school at age 21. So if they want to be a hairstylist, they'll receive an $800 monthly grant. And then when they graduate high school, they'll go to college for free. And then everyone will be given a grant to start their first business. That's what I would spend money on instead of military and war. Next, since the government, when I'm president, will be giving everyone a grant at age 18 for their first business, that won't take away jobs. See, we have a lifeguard who works for a public swimming pool. They can open their own business on top of being a lifeguard. Minimum wage per state will vary. Say you're in a state like Alabama with a lower cost of living. The minimum wage would be $18 per hour. New York State, California, minimum wage would be $30 per hour. It might blow your mind to learn the amount of money the United States spends on war and the military. Those are the things that I would put into place if I were president in 2028. I'll be over age 35 and you can vote for me. It all starts with education. Oh, and all prisoners will be forced to have college education while they're in prison. We'll take them out of prison, put them into a rehabilitation center, and they can leave once they graduate with a bachelor's degree. I will also promote that all public schools do away with processed garbage. Replace dairy with plant-based milks. Give plant-based options to students. Oh, and healthcare is free, including pharmaceuticals. Free pharmaceuticals and free healthcare for all. The United States would have a drastic change when I become president very concept of private prisons, as in corporations that make a profit by incarcerating our fellow citizens on behalf of the state, is a particularly egregious example of the perverse incentives created within a system that should be designed to promote the public good. When you stand back from it, it's 
pretty wild that such a thing exists at all. As of 2019, 8% of the total state and federal prison population was held in private prisons. At first glance, that number might seem a little low, until you consider the fact that America has by far the highest prison population and incarceration rate in the world. And so, according to the Sentencing Project, that 8% number equates to 115,428 people incarcerated in a private prison in 2019. If you ask me, that sounds like a whole bunch of people. That's more than the population of Burbank. Of course, those holly weirdo libs should be in prison anyway, so it's good that it's the size of Burbank. You ever thought of suicide? On the jail call while your mother cried She ain't understand you had to ride It was him or you, it was do or die Pick up, I'm on the jail call Pick up, I'm on the jail call Pick up, I'm on the jail call I got some I gotta tell y'all Slowly walking down the corridor I got four in, 24 more They saying free me on the internet Hey y'all, what the heck is a private prison? A private prison is a for-profit prison. It's run by a corporation, a third party, a third party corporation that has a contract with the government. Are private prisons a good thing? The Justice Department reported 49% more staff assaults and 65% more inmate assaults in private prisons than state prisons. Why, you might ask? Well, obviously, private prisons are out to make a profit. Monetization is their end game. So in order to make more money, they are paying their staff less, offering less training for their staff. They are giving inmates poorer living conditions and cutting inmate programming. So that's it. A private prison is a prison that is run by a corporation that has a contract with the government. There's three levels of prisons and one do on adults. There's a county jail. If you get arrested right now for stealing a car, you're going to the county jail. If you get arrested for murdering somebody, you're going to the county jail. If you get arrested for breaking in the house, you're going to the county jail. During your time in the county jail, it might be anywhere from one day to two years. You're going to wait trial. At the end of that trial, they might give you 20 years. You won't do that in the county jail. You go to the state penitentiary. So there's a county jail where the homeless people go and they commit minor offenses. They'll go there for one week, two weeks, they bail out when they get kicked out. But once you get convicted of a serious offense, you go to state prison anywhere from one day to, to life. Then there's a federal prison system, which is a little bit more complicated to get into. But nobody is county, state, federal. In state, you'll, you can spend from one day to life. One day to life. If you murder somebody, you, you, there's a good chance you're going to die in jail. The criminal justice system is not focused on rehabilitation because they're focused on mass incarceration. Slavery is allowed if it's for punishment of a crime. The 13th Amendment outlawed indentured servitude and slavery except as punishment of a crime. Our prisons are primarily run through private companies. Private companies at the end of the day have a bottom line. The more bodies who are locked up behind a cell in a private Prison means more funds for the shareholders of these private prison corporations. So, man, private prisons, boy, that's why they, uh, you know, I, things like that be making me speechless sometimes. And I have to find my words, man. Like, especially like the one where they had the guy talking about how he owned private prisons and was breaking down how he was making his money and stuff. And it's like, how evil must you be to think that that's good, something man. to admit out loud? Right, like you're making good money. Like, He's just another white collar. Right, and all money isn't good money. 
if your money is predicated upon the crime committed and the detriment of other people, you are a wicked person. All right. Like, like how Ice it. Cube was saying, uh, the people that are running the labels that are putting this evil music out there in our community are the same people that are running the uh, prisons. So that means these people that are running the prison, locking our people up, are also feeding our people lock up information to get them to get locked up because our music is affecting our people. Right? You listen to this music and this music convinces you that it's okay to be ratchet. It's okay to be a gangster. It's okay to go out there and slay iron, mm -hmm. which gets you locked up by these label label influences right into these label prisons. Right. Connected. <laughs> right. All the way connected, man. Connected. And then they they fuel the government because of the government contracts. Connected. The government don't want to get infused, so they have all of these laws. Connected. That'll get you locked up. Which connected. means that the government is funding this prison system, which is supposed to be rehabilitation, is actually a government entity or a, a government money source. So that means that the, the justice system is connected. Which is <laughs> right. The, the justice system, the um, the prosecutors, the lawyers, like all of this is connected. connected. <laughs> It's connected, y'all. And, you know, and, and it hurts my heart that people have to express this. Like, it hurts my heart that people don't just know this, right? Like, a lot of people have issues with um, what we do and how we do it as a people. And it's like, what do you expect? What choice did we have? What were we supposed to do? Mm -hmm. What would you have done had your ancestors not taken over this country? What as a matter of fact, let's let's just go on what did you guys do? When you were up against a wall and up against a tyrannical system that was throwing you in prison, that was taking all of your money, that wasn't feeding you correctly, and that was treating you like peasants, what did you do? You got on a boat, you left, and enslaved other people. So what do y'all expect? Now all of a sudden we the thugs and, 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 and degenerates and stuff because we listen to the stuff y'all promote and end up in prisons and stuff like that. And then because we're in prison, like, look, I went to county jail like old boy talked about. Um, I was... Supposed to go to state, but I I, I ended up um, taking the plea deal and stuff and getting the deferred adjudication, right? But I went to county, skipped over state, and then got in trouble on probation and had to go do uh, like a program at the prison, right? And uh, man, it you don't learn anything good in prison. You only learn how to be a criminal better. That's it. Mm -hmm. You learn how to fight. You learn how to make weapons out of nothing. You learn how to get past certain types of locks and stuff on doors. You learn how to jimmy rig TVs and stuff like that so that, you know what I'm saying, you can do stuff when you ain't supposed to. You, you learn how to gamble better. You learn how to play different little gambling games and stuff like that so that you can get more food in there because they don't feed you right. Like, that's what you learn in there. Especially if it's your first time. That's all you're going to You are going to learn how to live amongst criminals. That's it. And then when you get back out, that's why, a lot of, that's why there's such a thing as repeat offenders. Because when you get back out, you didn't learn nothing that would keep you from selling drugs again. Now you're back out here, selling still drugs, hungry. Trying to sell drugs better. Right. 
because you done met you done met a plug in that. Uh. <laughs> you done met a plug in jail. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and and but but this is real though. You know what I'm saying? Even though we we have like TV shows that kind of show you a little bit, but in real life, you know what I'm saying? Like you meet all kinds of people in there, and when you're in jail together. Even though there's a lot of issues between people in jail, there's a lot of camaraderie too. It's a lot of that when you get out, holla at me. It's a lot of that, yeah, man, on the outside, I was I was slanging bows, man. Holla at me when I get out, man, I got you. It's a lot of that. And we gotta remember, man, we not in no cartoon. I'm actually hungry. My kids really need food. Rent is due today. <laughs> like, I can't I can't go get no job and wait for no call back and wait for a two week. No. Rent is due today. Right now. I gotta go make some money today. And y'all just threw me back out here. Well, I know how to go make some money today. I know, I know what to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And on that note, for those of that hungry, we got some more of this for y'all. Mm -hmm. So y'all stay tuned. Put in the comments what y'all think about the information that was given out today. You know, what are y'all thoughts on it all? Mm -hmm. Any of y'all got experiences inside the prison system <laughs> as well? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because all of this corruption got to come to the light in order for anybody to be able to work with something to fix it. All right. For real. So, you know, uh, also let us know in the comments if y'all going to vote for a girl. Because uh, I feel like she's real optimistic, for one, about being president, and for two, about the program she wants to implement. Because even, like, see, people have an issue with the money being spent on war and stuff. But, you know, from someone who was in the military and everything, I think that a lot of people don't really understand the allocation of the funds of this country and the fact that those funds aren't real. Like, the money you're talking about doesn't exist. Right. They're not actually, <laughs> they're not actually sending them money. They're sending them weapons. Right. They they're cost sending, money. They're sending them tanks and jets that are worth $13 million. They're not actually sending them $13 million and saying, do with what you will. Right, no. <laughs> and, you know, and it's like this. Because that's not, that's not, okay, we just sent them a $400 million package. So they had $1,400 million of liquidated cash that they can just spread amongst America. No. They just emptied out one of their warehouses and gave it to to them, which right. was worth eight, $800 million. Right, you know what I'm saying? So, but we, we have to understand that. Like, that mon the, the money she's talking about really got to come from somewhere. Right. And America ain't got it. <laughs> they ain't got it. But yeah, man, uh, let us know what y'all think, man. But with that, we gonna say, Shalom Wine. Shalom Wine. And Shalom Wine.